Propose Profiles. Let's spend a, a few minutes taking a look at what's involved in creating or editing a proposed profile both in LAN Desktop and also in Civil 3D. We'll begin in LAN Desktop. In LAN Desktop I've got a project called Project PP for Proposed Profile and the drawing that I'm working with right now currently contains a horizontal alignment, a existing ground surface, and an existing ground profile which is the interaction between the alignment and the prof or the alignment and the surface. So let's do this. If I'm going to begin to construct a profile, I need to make sure that I've got the appropriate workspace so that the pull downs are available. In this case, civil design is, is already up. I'm going to grab profiles, and if I'm going to create a proposed profile, I need to know that I'm working with an edit vertical alignment because that is the area with which I will go in and work with a proposed profile. By selecting that, I've got some options for existing or finished ground. Um, alignments or profiles and I need to make sure that I'm selecting the appropriate one in the finished list in this case it's the centerline geometry as opposed to any number of offsets to the left or right. When I come into the environment it is a text-based area that I can fill in a various uh, table entries for station and elevation on my PVIs as well as vertical curves I can come in and you know do some of that quickly through these tools here and I can construct it in a tabular format. If instead I would like to create it more graphically there are some tools that I can do that. We'll come down to finish grade centerline tangent. First thing we'll do is I need to set the appropriate layer and then I can begin to start adding geometry crosshairs at grade uh, maybe I want to begin by sloping up at a 0.25%. It locks my crosshairs at the appropriate slope. We can then draw a line from the end point of here up in that direction to a particular distance. Then maybe change my slope again. Maybe I'll come down at negative half a percent. Adjust my crosshair again will continue on with my previous command line and we'll continue on from here. So we'll begin to draw that in. Now as I do that, it would have been nice if they would add a command that would then square up my crosshairs with the screen. There was not one. So I could uh, set my snapping uh, set variable to zero or I could set my grade percentage to zero to get my crosshair back to the area that I was familiar with. Once I've drawn this in and I've got something that I want to work with, I then have to commit that to be my proposed profile by saying define finish grade center line. Everything disappears except for those entities. We'll select them, then they become my edit vertical alignment center line. So now I've got information in there. If I was to make changes, the dialog boxes, while it is functional uh, and did a lot of design with it myself. It's a little bit cryptic. I've got uh, some limited uh, functions available. I've got, for example, I can only do grade out, so I'm going to continually grade up station. I can't go the other way. So I could change the grade out to be 0.3% instead of 0.25, which then is going to shove everything upstream. I have no ability to go back the other way so I can't go downstream. So it was a, a one directional um, flow with which to work. If I was to put a vertical curve in, maybe of uh, 150 feet, we could do that. It would add that geometry. I would need to understand that an asterisk means I've made modifications, but I haven't saved them. So if we save that, the asterisk goes away. So the, the tools themselves, while they are functional, and if we've used them for a long time, we can certainly be productive with them. Somebody else learning them, as well as you know, even ourselves working with it, the tools themselves are somewhat cryptic and can be labor intensive as we work with it. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll close out of that. Would we like to import it? Yes. Label tangents and vertical curves? Yes. Delete the finish round profile? Yes. And it adds our geometry in for us. So we get a flavor of that at the same time. You know, there's some other tools here. Uh, we can do vertical curves. Some of these slides, they've been around in the software since the old DCA days. So it is functional. However, it's a older interface. They're older routines, and the entry can be somewhat cumbersome.
Let's look at similar functionality now using Civil 3D. So I'm going to toggle over to the Civil 3D environment and while I could create an alignment in the surface here quickly, let's just pull what we're currently working with in LAN Desktop. So we'll pull in the surface, the alignment, and you'll see our existing and our proposed profiles. Go ahead and bring those in. We'll zoom extents. There is my surface and my alignment. If I would like to see the profiles, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what's called a profile view. Now the profile in Civil 3D is the interaction, if you will, of the uh, horizontal and the vertical whether that be the alignment in the surface or the alignment in a file or however the profile is created. It's basically the line. The profile view is the grid or the container that allows us to compare and contrast different profiles. Fantastic thing about this in Civil 3D is I'm not limited to a single existing and a single proposed, but instead I can have multiple proposed and multiple existings or surface profiles, if you will. And anybody that's worked on a land project before in civil or in uh, in land desktop, a roadway job that has some, you know, a fairly involved proposed situation. In some cases, you want more than one proposed that you can have. This is alternate one, alternate two, alternate three, and that just really isn't possible in the land desktop world. It's, however, very possible, very doable in the civil 3D world. Having said that, if we're going to use this as a tool to supplement land, we will limit ourselves to a single proposed and we'll create a profile view that's going to let us bring that data in. So I'm going to go ahead and use the wizard interface. The only thing that I'm going to change is we will go into the profile display options and we will tell it that I'd like to draw the existing and the proposed that came out of land. The style for the proposed. I'm going to set that to a predefined style here for design. We can use one that I've created myself or one that ships with the, the software by default. And then labeling for the proposed will say complete label set and create profile view. Pick that on the screen. The profile is drawn. We see both the existing as well as the, pro the proposed that we began with a 0.3% and a negative 0.53%. So, if we were going to continue with this, I can select the object. The contextual menus within Civil 3D will immediately tell me that's my proposed finished grade centerline. Based on the name, I can then come in and modify the geometry, and I get tools that are very reminiscent of the tools that are available for horizontal alignment. So the interface is very consistent with what we're familiar with already in Civil 3D. So as we become proficient in one area of the application, we are immediately, uh, I should say we've got not necessarily proficient, but we immediately have some idea of what the rest of the interface does as we go through. It's, it's very consistent. We learn one piece. That background then is applicable to other things we do um, within the software. So let's go ahead and continue on. Instead of just drawing tangents here, I'm going to adjust my settings a little bit such that it automatically puts the vertical curves in for me. So we'll say 150 foot vertical curve as my default is fine. By, the, uh, by default they're parabolic. I could do asymmetric as well, which was next to impossible in land. At least without uh, doing it automatically in, in land it would require us completely to, to kind of fake it manually. We'll do draw tangents with curves. Start point. We're going to start here. And you'll notice even as I pick, see how it's automatically applying the um, vertical curves. We'll take and slope down into this area. Maybe we'll, oh, we'll just take it to the end. So we'll grab an end point down here and we'll drop it. So our uh, proposed geometry is put in. Now we just kind of roughed it in. Let's drag the labels down so it's a little bit easier to see. And as far as slopes, you know, they're all over the board because I just kind of drew it. So by uh, coming up into our tool here with the layout, we can look at it in a grid view, very similar to what's available in LAN Desktop. However, now I can grade both directions, the grade in and the grade out, so I'm not required to just go up station. So I could quickly change this to um, half a percent, 2.10 is okay, maybe 3.25. We like to have nice round numbers so the surveying folks don't get upset when it has to be staked in the field. It's a little easier for them to compute their um, their uh, elevations. That looks good. 
we do it no import no changes it's uh, their objects they automatically update for us on the screen so that's that's completely done if I wanna make adjustments for example this PVI there are icons I can either click and move it up and down or I can click and I can continue to slide it along that same grade that I was working with before so we can easily make adjustments to those all the labeling all of the slopes everything updates for us we come back and maybe I don't like um, how this is here maybe I don't need this PVI we originally started with I can take that out maybe we'll take that one out too complete the command those are gone let's you know we probably have to have something we'll add a new PI PVI here that's done we can click we can grab that uh, PVI and maybe drop it down a little bit we want to add a curve there is a free vertical curve as well as we've got best fit functionality so if we have points along our profile perhaps as defined by our existing ground we could reverse engineer what the vertical curve is very quickly based on the existing design so in this case we'll just do a free vertical curve slopes in slopes out and the radius for that 150 or I could put in a K value it automatically applies the information and uh, and takes care of it for us so extremely flexible environment very easy to work with it's it's a very intuitive process other things that we can do there's a, a PVI locking functionality say for example we had a crossing street that came through here we can set a PVI at that location where the street would cross and then we'll come through and we can lock that PVI that is at station say a little bit higher than 14 plus zero zero so we'll come in and look 1442 it's in that range we'll come over and we are going to lock that PVI with that PVI locked take and drag my screen down here that PVI is currently locked because it is locked if any of the other geometry changes like say perhaps the um, the grade probably won't do it but maybe change the elevation you see how it's automatically maintaining that point because it has has to fall through that for the uh, the streets to work all right doesn't mean that we're not going to wind up with some design that isn't going to have to be revised but at least we're locked onto something now that we have some semblance of a network of our roadway uh, as we go through and do this we're not entirely required to have to remember all those points and make sure that we maintain them so there are uh, our options for us as well so very very intuitive process the contextual menus add and remove PVIs at will we can lock them um, we can you know get into criteria based designs such that we have to uh, maintain appropriate geometry for particular design features for uh, design speed things like that very very intuitive certainly much more powerful much easier to work with than what was available in land so how I would use this as a tool to uh, to work with land desktop I could come into civil 3d pull in the values as you saw me do initially I could do a ton of what-if analysis do some uh, design on this until I reach a point where yep I think that's a point where it's gonna be good for me I can roll that back then into land and I can continue on with my standard workflow I would do that via land XML so we're gonna go ahead and come under prospectors here under our inventory for our centerline alignment this being first street we're gonna to export to land XML which will export first street my profiles existing and proposed we will send that to land XML 1.1 and we'll call this proposed profile that being done let's go back to land desktop we are in land but what I'm going to do is we will come under projects import land XML and I'm going to come down under my desktop here and we will grab the proposed profile XML so it's going to come in uh, unable to based on FGC okay to add this 
So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. The naming convention is a little bit different. That's fine. So it's going to be brought in as the proposed center line. That's fine. So basically it's going to overwrite the one that was there. So that's done. I'm happy with that. Let's take a quick look. We will come to profiles. I'm going to finish grade uh, vertical alignments. We will do import. Label tangents and vertical curves, yes. Delete finish ground center line, yes. And there you see our roadway design coming directly out of Civil 3D. So once again, there are lots and lots of benefits to working with Civil 3D to create our proposed profile, a lot of flexibility that doesn't exist in land, and then I can immediately roll it back into this environment such that I can continue on with my traditional land desktop workflow.